No, we're not going to tell him. Tomorrow in tool time, I'll talk to Mr. Leonard, tool man and tool man, okay? We're just going to go in there and pretend nothing happened? That's how we do it, my family. She still doesn't know it's in the summer of love I hitchhiked to Indy, where you and I lived together before we were married. Hi, Bob. Oh, hi. How'd you like the restaurant? Oh, it's great. You know, I didn't expect your home so early. Maybe I'll just go over to Art's and surprise him. Well, that would surprise him, but you don't want to do that. Why? You think he's in bed? I'd bet on it. 9.30 on a Saturday night? I'm sure he's still up. Mom, Mom, you can't go. Why not? Because, gosh darn it, I miss you. <laughs> you should go see Art tomorrow. Okay, I guess that can be done. Great. Let's have some coffee. We'll talk about all the things we haven't talked about. Okay. Why not start with how you two lived together before you got married? <laughs> you handle that. I'll make the coffee. It's going to be great having you on the show, Wilson. You know, your sculptures are incredible. Well, thank you, Al. Ever since I was a young lad, it was always a dream of mine to create metal headwear. Well, ever since I started working with Tim, it's been a dream of mine to wear metal headwear. You know, I have to confess, I am feeling a wee bit of stage fright. A little nervous, are you? Well, I'm fearing I'm about to experience reverse peristalsis. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm about to blow chowder. <laughs> Where's Mr. Hunter? He, he called to say he's running a little late. Oh, I bet he's running late. But you're picking up babes out of the Social Security office. <laughs> well, I thought Mr. Leonard was dating your mother. That's what I thought. And last night I saw him kissing some other woman at a restaurant. Yeah. Well, it seems to me that Mr. Leonard probably has a problem with monogamy. Okay, what kind of wood he uses? <laughs> this guy's a role model. I looked up to this guy. <laughs> well, Tim, I'm reminded of what the English essayist Samuel Johnson said about teachers of morality. Oftentimes they discourse like angels, but more often they live like men. The problem is my mom's never been happier. You guys? We're on in three minutes. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Tim, stand away from Wilson. Why? <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> well, now that we've finished showing you Wilson's metal sculptures... I'm Spartacus. No, I'm Spartacus. I'm Spartacus. Ask anybody. I'm... No, I'm Spartacus. Okay, you Spartacus. You go ahead with that Spartacus stuff. Get whipped. Spartacus and I will be right back after these messages with Tim's high school shop teacher, Mr. Leonard. He just shows how to customize a mailbox, so stay tuned. All right, sorry, yeah. Be careful with this. Hey, Jimmy, I, 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 I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah, thanks for showing up halfway through the show. I was getting the stitches removed from my butt. Doctor says hello, he recognized your handiwork. <laughs> All right, well, we're back with Mr. Leonard, who's going to show us his hobby. At least one of them. <laughs> Uh, well, now, this is a very beautiful mailbox. Mm -hmm. How would you go about making one of these? Oh, easy. Just take a sheet of your 24-gauge half-hard aluminum and bang it out against a sheet metal anvil. Well, you have a lot of hammers to choose from. This here is a ball peen. This is a bumping hammer. Which one would you prefer, Mr. Leonard? Well, actually, Alan, I like to use both of them. So one hammer's not good enough for you. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Each, each hammer gives you something different. Well, you know, there's a lot of good, solid folks out there that think you should pick one hammer and stick with that. Well, I think they're crazy. I even use a riveting hammer, and sometimes I use a rubber mallet. You'll just hammer with anything, won't you? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about a guy I thought I knew. Not a guy that goes and picks up tools at restaurants and makes out with them. <laughs> All right, okay, well, I think it's time for another break. We'll be right back after these messages from Bidford. <laughs> Tim, what is the matter? Yeah, what's going on? I got a little bone to pick with Mr. Leonard. Well, fine, let's hear it. Well, yeah, come on, yes. Pick your bones backstage. <laughs> All right, what's your problem with me, kid? I saw you at Sarantino's last night with another woman. Oh, boy. Yeah, I saw everything. The flowers, the kiss. I'll be honest with you, Tim. I am dating another woman beside your mother. Her name is Florence. 
How could you do this to Mom? She told me you made her happy as been in years. Jimmy, I feel the same way about your mother. Well, what about Florence? I, I, I wanted to break it off with her, so I took her out to dinner to say goodbye. Well, that's not what it looked like. Well, I know. I, I kept saying goodbye, and she kept saying hello. <laughs> All I'm saying is my mom is real serious about you. Tim, I was married for 42 years. After my wife died, I never thought I'd date again. And then about three months ago, I met two terrific women. I really liked the both of them. I guess I went a little overboard. You gotta figure out who you're saying hello to, who you're saying goodbye to. You guys were on in three seconds. Are you two finished, or should I do it by myself? You do it by yourself, we're all finished. Come on. <laughs> well, we're back with Mr. Leonard, who's now gonna choose between a ball peen hammer and a bumpy hammer, remembering how close he is to the sun of the ball peen. What do you think he's saying to her down there? Mm. Was he gonna stop seeing that other woman? Mm. Was he gonna make more of a commitment to your mother? Mm. How is it possible for you to have a conversation with this man and know nothing? I don't know. <laughs> That's the difference between you and me. I don't find it necessary to pry in every detail of other people's lives. Well, neither do I. God, I wish we'd put that intercom switch on downstairs. I did, just turn the volume on. You know, I, uh, I've been thinking a lot about our relationship. I have, too. Oh, okay. So you want to go steady? <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Does that mean you won't be seeing that other woman? Well, I wasn't that obvious, was I? No. It was Tim and Jill. They were acting so idiotic last night, I knew something was up. <laughs> well, that is all over. I've also given a great deal of thought about my priorities in life. And you're right at the top. Right after my arthritis pills. <laughs> you're at the top of my list, too. After my bunion pad. <laughs> Boy, are we going to be a lovely pair walking hand in hand into the pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> so, where do we go from here? I don't know, but at our age, we better go fast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're prettier than a blushing apricot in a little wicker basket. <laughs> I love it when you talk fruit to me. <laughs> He sure knows his produce. <laughs> what do you think they're doing now? Pretty quiet. Hey, Mr. Leonard! <laughs> you in some dessert? Ooh, we've got dessert. We have a delicious creme brulee. Mm. I don't believe this guy. <laughs> All right, it's a little bland. <laughs> but the chocolate mousse is excellent. You can't believe a word the man says. All right, the lemon tart. <laughs> I swear by it. What the heck's going on here? You got a lot of nerve. Yeah, careful, Tim. She's half your age, buddy. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. Tim, I'd like you to meet my daughter. <laughs> well, of course it's your daughter. She's half your age. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm just gonna slip back to my table and finish my other book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. But stupid. 